Hello everybody. This is going to be my fishing or how to fish in Turkey video. But before I start and before I open myself up to all the abuse that all the keyboard warriors have there, I'd like to state I'm not professional. I do not think I'm John Wilson or Jeremy Wade. I am going fishing. I brought my camera along. I'm just going to snip a few bits, see what happens. And it is what it is. I've got a fair few more days left. I've got all the gear. Certainly got the weather. And the water around here is alive. So we'll keep our camera on. We'll keep going. And hopefully uh, it'll all make sense. Maybe someone might actually like it. Tight lines. Okay, so I've been casing, uh, looking out around. Okay, so this is going to be one of my fishing spots. There are some monstrous fish here. They really are. I've seen them. The whole place is alive. I'm just going to show you quickly. It is hot. It is really hot. There's lots of bait fish. There's lots of bass. Lots of bream. Lots of big mullet. In theory. In theory. Eh? It's one thing I always do looking around is I always approach the locals and as long as you ask nicely and respectful even though you don't have any language skills this gentleman's just got one here Maribar what do you got? oh mullet for eating Look, yeah. <laughs> for eating yeah <laughs> well we're in the right spot I'll stand and watch this fellow he seems to know what he's doing doesn't seem anything that uh, that complicated a little bit of bread, big hooks. Go on, sir, give it, a, give it a whack. Give it a whack for us, go on. Don't fall in. Even I can do that. In theory. So, uh, my new friends just caught the monster of the day. Can we see? <laughs> That's what it's all about, eh? He's certainly got a few. Doing a fair bit better than I am. Mm. Say hello. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll leave you to that one. <laughs> mullet fishing. Ah. Ah. That's what mullet fishing does to you. He's probably not that old. He's probably younger than me. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do some mullet, proper mullet fishing tomorrow. We can see the madness first time. So mullet fishing, yeah? They are throwing themselves out the water. It is prime time, they are everywhere. Can I hook one? No. Mullet fishing. Okay, um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be staying as I've just seen a big sod off snake right by my feet and it's one thing to fish with the snakes in England but we have to respect where we are and what kind of nastiness is kicking around in here so we're on ultra alert I did it it's only taken three hours <laughs> That's what all the fuss is about. Oh, spiky. Careful. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, sir. My new Turkish friends. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Hello everybody. Today we're going mullet fishing again. My Turkish friends are over there to give me encouragement. They've been showing me a few things. 
Ah, excuse the sweat. It is hot as hell. It really is. <coughs> well, let's see if we can winkle them out. I'll get set up and I'll, uh, I'll show you a few rigs. So I thought I'd share with you my uh, mullet fishing rig. I'm not sure how this is going to go down, but this is what the locals use and it does work. It works really well. So I fashioned together my own version. I have a small bobber float, one swan shot, and three size tens. All on fine bit of line, single bit of bread. We just dance it across the water. It might be unclean, technically, but it does work. And I shall uh, show you some evidence, probably. So here's a little thought. Um, whilst, well, when you're mullet fishing, it's advisable to sit downstream of other people mullet fishing. All their bread, all their bit, all gets washed down. That's where the fish are. Uh, second tip, cigars help keep the, uh, the mosquitoes away. And not many of them, but the, those that are around uh, are a little bit vicious. There you go. And it really works. I'm really going to upset the locals now and uh, slip this one back. So, we just found this lovely gentleman who's uh, specialising in some live baits. I'm not sure where he gets them from. Oh yeah, fantastic. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm almost scared to touch them. Yeah, one more, one more. <laughs> super, super, super. He's got a lovely little style here. There's a few basics, a few essentials. Right, it's the live bait that we really need. I got up very early this morning. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute scorching day. Morning to you, Susa. Hello. You're ruining my video. No, stop it. Hello. Hello. It's okay. Yeah. Have you finished? Good morning. It's very early and uh, we're going on a little adventure. I'm not going to try for the mullet today because I hate mullet. You get caught in the mullet madness, we'll be there for hours. So we're going on a little bit of a species hunt. Uh, I reckon I have about four or five hours until it gets too hot to uh, be outside in the sun. So we're going to follow the river all the way to the coast, see if we can't get a bass or anything else, and a mullet. I'll keep my camera on. I've got some bait, some bread. It's going to be a good one. But it's already hot. some huge bass just floating over there. And, uh, stealthy, stealthy, quietly. 
got a palm, size 12, it's a little hook. I'm just going to do some stalking. I'm going to have to be very quiet, they are skittish. Oh, they're everywhere this morning. Okay, so made it all the way to the beach. Very nice. There are all manner of big fish ream mullet in front of me. I've caught a couple. I've got one floating out there, just in case. I was speaking to a gentleman who's just left. He was catching big bass here yesterday at this time. You never know. I'm not going to stop here long. I'm going to keep walking. Trial and error. I really like this spot. Um, the wind's picked up, a lot of the bait fish have drifted off, but I think I'm gonna get up at the crack of uh, dawn again tomorrow. Hit the spot first. Mm. I've come to the very end <coughs> of Charlie's Beach. It's a merging point. The water is so warm. The air is really strange, it's really hazy today. Um, it's raining all up and down the coast. We're not supposed to get any today, but you can feel it in the air. It's a lot cooler, it's a lot refreshing. But we can't see any signs of any fish. It's always the weather. Still gonna try though. friend. Hello? Yes? You? Yes? He doesn't understand me. He doesn't speak English. Hello little doggy. <laughs> Look at the state of him. Yeah. Oh. Her, sorry. Her. Her. Yes, aren't you? Yes. Aren't you a little girl? Who's a kitty? Where are you going? So I've thrown uh, my rod out with the last of my prawns. It's a last ditch attempt to be honest. I think it's getting uh, a bit too hot, a bit too late. The wind's not ideal. But you have to be in it to win it. Just ledged it on the bottom. I walked it up. Oh, do that again. Do that again. Um, Alright, I'll keep you close. So it's midday now. Um, I've run out of bait, I've run out of water. It's getting far too hot, so I'm going to hide, hide away for a few hours. There is something though. Um, before I set fishing, I planted a little crab pot just over there. It's had a couple of hours soak time now, so I'm going to go pull it and see if, uh, see if there's anything kicking around. Uh, wish me luck.
So yeah, deadliest catch turkey style. Oh, blue swimmer crabs. Almost big enough to eat, but we're not going to be doing that. If I had caught a bass or something uh, this morning, I would have probably taken these and the bass and had my uh, little mixed, uh, mixed seafood grill, but two small crabs, it's not worth it. Those are the two luckiest crabs on Cali's beach today. Look at them all blue and angry. <laughs> so we come to the bait shop for uh, more mamun, as the turkeys call it. Marimau. Oh, big ones, grandy big ones. Oh, look at that one. Get that bad boy there. That one. Yeah. Two cups, uh, 15 lira. It's like two pounds thirty or something. Whew. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't it? Hello again, or should we say <coughs> Maraba, Maraba? I thought I'd take a little minute and show you some of the uh, equipment that I've brought with me. Now I have gone overboard, but the advantages of uh, not going with a woman is I've got so much more space in my suitcase, and it's just going to waste. So. I've got a couple of cheap telescopic rods, but nothing fancy. Eight, ten pound line minimum, more than enough that you need, more, more, more. I've got my big rod. Again, four sections, collapses down into a suitcase. I've got my net. Again, that's an extravagance, but it really does come in handy. For holding fish, you catch a big fish, big mullet, big bass on the fine line, it's really good. And I've got my quiver with a bag stick. Just to save carrying around if I have to catch the bus or a boat somewhere, strap it on my back and we're away. It's easy as that. And if you look down here, it's just a standard tackle box, lots of small hooks, a couple of lures, some big floats, swivels, ball weights. It's not that exciting. If you coarse fish, it's just stepped up coarse gear with a bit of pipe gear thrown in there. Throw it in, throw it out. It's not my best gear. So if anything happens to it, it's not that much of a deal break. Now, with regards to bait, you're probably going to struggle. Everywhere's different. Some things are available in other areas. But the omnipresent bread loaf, that will do for pretty much everything. Over here in Turkey, they sell little bags of chicken, little diced chicken. Again, fantastic. Stays in the hook, goes really rubbery in the sun. Strong as hell, but the real good stuff is down here. The locals call it mamun. Now these fellows are still alive. If you can get them, great. They need to be kept cold in the shade. They won't last long outside of the fridge. But they cost a pound or two pounds or something, so it's not really a cost issue, it's just for a uh, convenience, shall we say. There are a couple of other things that a lot of people neglect. I know what swims around here, and I'm cautious, because I know what swims around here. So, I have a nice thick glove. Anything with spikes, anything with claws, some of these fish can really hurt you, and they will. Long nose forceps. Straight out of my pike set, nothing fancy. I've got a multi-tool, small knife, screwdriver, nail file. It's pretty much essential whenever you go traveling, to be honest, it's really handy. I've got a cloth, of course, and... Polaroid sunglasses. Really gives you an advantage with the mullet, in theory. So that's it all, that's everything laid out. We're going to pack it all together, 
the sun's going down a little bit, might not be so boiling. We'll see what happens. Again. Okay. And of course, you're going to need lots of water and factor 30 sun cream. Just in case you didn't think of that yourself. So my friend Ishmael called me, he goes, come tonight brother, we catch big fish. Here I am. My friend Ali over there, he's going to take me uh, all the way to Fetier. We're going to meet uh, Ishmael, we're going to have some laughs, we've got big bait. And uh, Inshallah, Inshallah, everybody loves Inshallah. Yes, Captain Ali taking us fishing. Well, he's taking me fishing, he's taking these girls uh, wherever. So my friend Ishmael has taken me to his secret spot, quiet, in the middle of nowhere, he says. It's nice, it's good fishing, there's no one around. I think he might be a little bit of a liar. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. Way to catch the fish. Yeah, all fishermen are liars. So this is new to me. We are nighttime fishing. Ishmael is here, doing my guide. And I'm trying my best to pay attention to my float, but there are many, many distractions here. Many, many people. Hard life. Morning, everybody. The search for the bass continues. I'm at the end of the beach, the swamp, again. Beautiful. It is baking hot. Flat calm. And they are around. I am getting the bites, but I'm trying to hit one. It's a proving challenge. But we'll try and try. Okay, update. I've scaled down my tackle to as light as I dare. Um, I think it's like a size 14 hook maybe, but the result's instantaneous. Um, I'm getting all kinds of things like this. It's not a bass. I have no idea what it is, but it doesn't matter. We'll keep plugging away. Good thing I brought my discard, yeah? Come on. Yeah, that's a bit better. Ah. Ah. Little sea bream. I've no idea what kind of fish these are, but they really put up a good account for themselves. <laughs> they really do. Gone for a little wander. Look what I found. Dead mullets. Of course, I'm not going to take this and eat it, but I am 
going to put it in my crab trap for, as bait. Something's really eating that. So my uh, friendly fisherman here, he spends all his free time just making rigs to sell. He's got the spools, the swivels, all the hooks. Custom made. You ask him what I want, he'll make it in just a few hours. Far too professional for me. The water is so warm. It's like bath water. It really is. It's fantastic. Uh, so many things swimming and crawling around my feet. I'm having to be careful really where I'm stepping. Little sea bream. If only we get one four times bigger. It's far too small. It's very lucky. The wind should be dying down in the next hour. That's when uh, we're going to throw the big baits out. All right. Well, it's packing up time. Nothing massive. Plenty of small bream, plenty of small mullet. And I put my crab trap out again. Uh, oh, a couple more, but again, they're too small. They're really not worth eating. I know that some people might disagree with me, but there we go. Go on, up you go, mate. You as well. Come on. Yeah, Alright, that's how that is it. And he's on. Oh, let's go for a beer. <laughs> 